These are AC-45 catamarans, smaller versions of the AC-72s that will race for the America's Cup in September 2013 in San Francisco. If you think these 45s are amazing, dangerously fast and unstable, wait until you see the 72s. In 1851, a radical schooner named America crossed the Atlantic and beat the Brits at their own game, winning a big silver trophy that was renamed the America's Cup. America's lopsided victory started a sailing competition that the USA kept winning for 132 years. At first, it was held in really huge, grand old yachts. It was always a design contest with national pride at stake, funded by the world's wealthiest and most determined men. In the 1930s, it was held in J-class yachts, some of the prettiest, most powerful big sailboats ever conceived. Competition was suspended during World War II, but in 1958, the cup resumed in 12 meters because they were smaller and more affordable. We are looking for the smoke at any moment. They're about to do it. They're about to cross the line. They make a final move. Finally, it happened. America lost the cup after 132 years. The Aussies had won it in their seventh attempt in 1983. American Challenge and won it back in 1987 in Fremantle. Ever hear of Dennis Conner? He's the guy who lost it, then won it back. In 1988, something odd happened. The United States defended a rogue challenge from New Zealand. Rogue because New Zealand came at the US in a 90-foot waterline, so-called big boat. Caught by surprise, America decided to defend the cup in a catamaran with a hard wing sail, a very controversial move. A long legal battle ensued, after which the cat left the big boat in its wakes. Why? Because two holes are faster than one. For the next 15 years, the cup was contested in slightly bigger, faster monoholes designed to a specific rule. America lost the cup for the second time in 1995. A guy named Russell Coots did the job for New Zealand. New Zealand defended successfully in 2000. Then Coots and five of his mates got recruited by the Swiss and won it for them. It was the third America's Cup win for Coots. For the next match in 2010, the Swiss defender and the American challenger could not agree on what sort of boat to race. After another long court battle, they decided on big multi-holes, 100 footers. The US boat had a wing sail 238 feet high. The sight to behold, it was high drama. The Americans won the cup back for a second time. Syndicate head and Oracle Corporation CEO Larry Ellison and crew were honored at the White House. Ellison and Russell Coots planned for the defense. Inspired by their winning trimaran, they decided to keep multi-holes in the game. Pretty much everyone wants to have a new class of boat. A new boat that gives the chance for high-speed sailing. Anything else would have been a step backwards in speed and technology, and stepping backwards is not what the cup is all about. Ellison and Coots decided to design and build the AC-45s as a way to move everyone up the high-tech multi-hole learning curve. Monohole sail upwind at 10 knots max. 45s hit 15 knots upwind. Monohole sail downwind at 14 knots. Would you believe 30 plus in an AC-45? It's wet and wild on these boats. Hard hats are required. So is strength, agility, and endurance, and courage. Each of the teams interested in challenging got an AC-45 to sail in the America's Cup World Series, raced around Europe and the United States. The level of technology brought to this new game is impressive. For good racing and spectator appeal, the race course has boundaries. That's a first for sailboat racing. The boundaries are electronic. Instruments on the boats allow them to be read with great accuracy. Touch a boundary, and a blue light activates on your boat, meaning you've been penalized. Judges are in a trailer watching the amazingly accurate live line graphics. They call the shots, light the lights. To serve a penalty, the team must slow down for several boat lengths. When the blue light goes out, the penalty has been satisfied. Tactics and catamarans are different because the boats are surface skimmers with little momentum, but they're designed to race in wind speeds from three to 33 knots. When it blows, they accelerate like dragsters. Try to fly, in fact. But even with a wing, that's not quite possible. No, 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 we're not, we're not, we're 
The boats are different, and so are the sailors. They're young, very athletic, very fit, able to think fast, adept at both tactics and technology. This is not your father's America's Cup. This is the America's Cup as extreme sports.